Hi there, welcome to Get Lit. I'm Pete Crooks, senior editor and senior writer at Diablo Magazine, and on Get Lit, we meet with local writers and authors and talk to them about their work. Today we have a very special guest, a friend of mine, Cameron Tuttle, who's had great success with her Bad Girls guidebooks, as well as her teen series about Paisley Hanover. Welcome, Cameron Tuttle. Thanks, Pete. It's great to be here. Great to see you. So your second book in a trilogy about Paisley Hanover is just out, Paisley Hanover Kisses and Tells. Yes. What can you tell us about Paisley Hanover? Well, Paisley is a 15-year-old sophomore in high school. Um, she's very fallible. She's always trying to do the right thing, but it never quite works out the way she plans. But then somehow, with the help of her friends, she miraculously kind of pulls it off. So I think she's a character that, that readers really relate to. Um, and I relate to her just because she is so, so flawed. It's a fun character to write. And you grew up right here in the East Bay in Lafayette, and you went to high school. I grew up in Lafayette, yeah. I went to Akalani's High School. In fact, um, anybody who knows the Akalani's campus, although I think it's the old Akalani's campus, is exactly the same as the campus where Paisley Hanover goes to school. Um, she goes to Pleasant Hill High. Akalani's just happens to be on Pleasant Hill Road, mm -hmm. just to show you what a wild, incredible imagination I have. Well, the first book, Paisley Hanover Acts Out, was an absolute delight for me to read. I love uh, teen fiction and children's fiction, and I thought that was uh, just a really fun book that was appropriate for that age group, um, but right up to date with Facebook and all the kind of um, things that the that kids are doing, as well as some of the s more serious peer pressure issues that, c that come up in teen life. Um, talk a little bit about the audience that you're reaching and the kind of um, maturity of the subject matter that you want to that you want to approach. Well, the the readers are basically sort of 12 to 16 is the is the target target audience. But I I know that it's um, actually a good read for older people, uh, men and women as mm -hmm. well. It's may may be prone to um, painful flashbacks to high school mm -hmm. stresses. Um, but I, I try to create a world that's very real. It's um, a little bit of what you might call heightened reality. So the, the lows are a little bit more dramatic and the highs are a little bit more, you know, uh, more exciting than a typical high school kid might experience. But we're dealing with issues of bullying. Um, that was the sort of the main issue in the first book. And in the second book, um, sexting is a big is a big plot point. Um, a good friend of Paisley's is about to be sort of exposed, no pun intended, in a, in a sexting kind of um, episode and Paisley has to sort of help her out. So I, I try to weave in some sort of cautionary tales without hitting anybody over the head mm -hmm. with a, you know, hey, hey kids, this is what you got to do. Right. Um, and also, it's, it's hopefully funny. Um, I, think, I think humor is a great way of delivering any message. Well, all of your books from the Bad Girls Guide books um, through the Paisley Hanovers uh, are, are just delightful to read because there is that that sense of humor um, that carries you through the story but I was really impressed with Paisley Hanover because I thought it was a very substantial uh, bit of reading there was there was really a lot to think about there it wasn't just the fluff that you would see on television programs uh, aimed at that uh, that age group there was there was really something to think about that was uh, relevant to to the way teens live thanks yeah I mean I've, I've tried to um, look at sort of the other uh, other types of books that are out there for teens to read right now and, and there's a lot of sort of doom and gloom stuff there's a lot of apocalyptic stuff you know obviously tons of vampire stuff mm -hmm. but I wanted to create um, a series that would be a great read for guys and girls and but that would um, also get them to think about you know the ramifications of being really mean and gossiping about even your friends to other people and what can happen and um, also just you know the dangers of of uh, not sort of being honest not being honest with your friends not being honest with yourself paisley spends a lot of time learning um, lessons sort of the hard way um, one of those lessons happens actually at the walnut festival um, so in in paisley hanover kisses and tells the second book there's a big plot point that takes place at the Walnut Festival, which, yes, is based on the real Walnut Festival, which I went to many, many, many years ago as a teenager. That's one of the delights of the reading these books, too, and, and having an awareness of this area is there's all sorts of um, uh, references to businesses and, and street corners. And then if they're not 
exactly where you think they are, you know where you where they might be. I remember um, Freddy's Pizza, yeah. a non-existing uh, pizza place anymore. It, it's not there used anymore, be, in Lafayette, but it was an institution yeah, for a long famous time. Famous in Lafayette. So yeah. is that where you went for pizza when you were absolutely, growing? absolutely for my like my fifth birthday on. So yeah, it's, it's nice. And Millie's Millie's Kitchen is also in the in the the books. That's um, great. It's yeah. nice in a fictional universe that you can kind of pick and choose from your favorite places, and then if something didn't exist here in suburban East Bay, you could make it up that it does. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the fun of, of writing fiction, is you, um, you do get to, like, you know, draw upon your own experiences and then embellish. Um, you know, it's, I mean, fiction is always a combination of past truths and an author's imagination. It's, it's never purely imagination, even if you think it is. I mean, I've had people ask me, so wait, are there any characters in this book that are based on, you know, real people from high school? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I think there might be two characters. And I started out actually believing that. And then when I stepped back and I looked at him, I'm like, oh my gosh, whoa, he's based on him and kind of a composite of, the, and the, there were like four or five, six or seven characters that were all sort of loosely drawn from people that I knew. And mm -hmm. some of them are sort of types or archetypes. Um, and you know, often you can't tell the difference between what you've just, imagined and made up that day and what sort of been percolating in the back of your mind for That's years. That's interesting. Yeah. What were you reading um, when you were uh, 12 or, or 13? I was reading, in high school I can remember, The World According to Garp was, was a big uh, favorite of mine, but that was adult stuff, mm -hmm. but it was sort of accessible and fun and irreverent as well, which I, which I like. Um, and I was, you know, I was reading the classics, like a separate piece. Um, what else did I love? Fitzgerald, I'm a big Fitzgerald fan. Mm -hmm. That's why I ended up going to uh, going east to school because I was very caught up in the romantic notions of just going to college in New England. But uh, yeah, I would have to say Mad Magazine was my primary, you know, influencer <laughs> back back way back. <laughs> well, irreverent humor uh, certainly is is uh, abound in Mad Magazine. Uh, let's go back a little bit to the the first book you published. Um, was there some, was there a book before the Bad Girls Guide? Yes, there actually. Um, the first book that I published under my own name was called The Paranoid's Pocket Guide, and it was basically a little bathroom book um, mm -hmm. filled with hundreds of of facts that would drive you either into a nervous hysterical laughter or make you like totally freaked out and paranoid. Um, mm. Little facts like um, most homeowners insurance policies cover destruction by asteroid. And that's all I would say, just enough to kind of make you go, huh. <laughs> and you know, this year, you know, 792 people will be injured by a toilet seat. You, that's all, it's all just, 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 just enough to kind of let your imagination go. So um, yeah, it was a goofy little book. It actually did really well. and. Um, Got me on Oprah, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. It was, it's been all downhill from, from there. No, no offense. But, you know, <laughs> my first TV appearance was actually on the Oprah Winfrey show. So, wow. yeah, it was terrifying. How did that go? And, and what did that do to your life as far as people like <laughs> Well, I didn't sleep at all the night before. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it, it, was, it was not one of her book club selections, obviously. It was part of a, a show that she was doing on people with weird you know, paranoias and, and phobias. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of her humorous lead into a show on that topic. And, um, you know, it was great, great press. Like at that point, I think there were maybe 20 million viewers. So I spent a lot of time the night before thinking, if I'm really smart and funny, 20 million people are gonna buy my book. And if I'm an idiot, no one's gonna buy my book. So it was somewhere in between there. And then you went on to great success with the Bad Girls Guidebooks. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that was sort of an unexpected, you know, it was a it was a goofy little kind of quirky book. It w I was inspired by Thelma and Louise, which was a movie that at the time was really kind of polarizing and inspiring and powerful for women. And I think it it scared men and made men angry. And it, it was it was interesting. It was about you know these two women mm -hmm. who basically take off and hit the road and kind of break all of their own rules. And um, the ending is uh, you know rather ominous. You know, they end up driving off a cl cliff together. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, but I was really moved by that, by that movie, as were so many other people. And I, and I thought, God, there's something here that, there's something here about finding a time and a space to be uh, your own person, where you can kind of recreate yourself at any stop. And that's got, that's what got me thinking about, about the, 
The Bad Girl's Guide to the Open Road. And I can remember the, the day that the title came to me. I was reading some women's magazine. And on the left-hand page was an article about a librarian, written by a librarian. And she's like, looks like the sort of typical kind of, you know, petite, mousy woman saying, and the headline was something like, I'm a librarian, but I secretly long to be naughty. And then on the, on the right-hand side was, a, I think it was a Mazda Miata ad. And it was like one woman by herself in a car. And the headline was something like, you know, make them wonder if you're ever coming back again. And I looked at those two ads, or one editorial and one ad, and I was like, bing. And I kind of got the title for the book. And it was really just me sort of inspired by Thelma and Louise and realizing that you don't have to kill someone to hit the road and have fun mm -hmm. and you don't have to drive off a cliff at the end but there's something really powerful for women especially because um, I think you know those books were really funny but there's a there's a thread of really sort of serious stuff which is I think is why the humor um, has momentum and why the books did so well and I really believe that women especially in this type of community where I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to be a great daughter, a great mom, a great wife, a great employee, and to really try to be a super woman. And a lot of women kind of lose sight of their own happiness because they're so caught up in, in being there for other people. And so the Bad Girls Guides was an opportunity for women to kind of cut loose, kind of gave them permission to go out for a night with their girlfriends or their, you know, single friends and, and just have some fun. But there, there really is sort of a, a, a foundation of, of truth there that I think resonated with a lot of people. And the books also blew me away. I mean, I wrote the first book. It was just, I thought it was like this little pink book about road tripping. And I would get letters from women saying that these books had changed their lives. And I didn't think anybody would take them seriously. But I mean, there, were, there was a woman in Seattle who was dying of cancer, and she and her close circle of friends were using the Bad Girls Guides as sort of their Bible to have fun ar around this woman's last few months of her life. So it was really an unexpected ride for me, I have to say. That's interesting. Yeah. The, w one thing that worked so well about those books was the sort of spin on on guidebooks and the format that you presented the material with the plastic cover and everything. It yeah. was like a Fodor's travel book or something like that. Can you talk about that that marketing and, and, the, and the packaging of the books to present it in a, in a creative way? Yeah, it's kind of an interesting story because th there were no there were no girl guides then. This was actually the first sort of like girl guide to whatever. There had been the preppy handbook, but that was when I was in high school. That was um, eons ago. and. I knew we wanted to do sort of a faux field guide, like an Audubon guide, so that the covers are vinyl. Um, they happen to be sort of porn star pink vinyl in mm -hmm. the case of my books, but the, the, the initial plan was to make them black, actually, a black vinyl sort of with a pebbly cover and a pink type, but the pink ink wouldn't stick to the pebbly vinyl cover. So at the last minute, the very last minute, they tw my publisher twisted my arm and said, they had this really outrageous, obnoxious porn star pink cover. Can we use this? And I was like, oh, I hate pink. I hate pink. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And so it ended up really sort of as a production. It was a, I mean, the plan to do a vinyl cover was always, was always there from the start, but the fact that they ended up being pink was sort of an accident. And it really was a wonderful, it was a happy accident, mm -hmm. needless to say, except for the fact that we all now have to look at a lot of books with pink covers. 